Ooh. <laughs> oh man. Octavia is so just awesome. Gonna isn't say she? She's oh, amazing. Man. Octavia is amazing. I, I think you guys had a fun time. Uh, I remember interviewing you all at Cannes in that year with that film, and that was, I think, to see that a movie about the African American experience could resonate around the world was something that has that was something that got um, that meant a lot to you, right? And it continues to mean a lot to you, and will obviously come up again with Black Panther. This notion that what we'd heard for, for so long, the, the thing in the business, black films don't travel, meaning can't sell tickets overseas. That's always kind of gotten under your skin a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's something that I think you hear and, and, and you always, you know, you're looking for the, the way to, to chop that down. You're looking for the, the, the opportunity to, to prove that wrong, you know, that theory wrong. And, you know, for with Fruitville, you know, going over to Cannes, you know, the French are very honest it's at the Cannes film, 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 film Festival, and they will let you know whether they yes. if they don't like it or not. Yes. Um, and I remember being there, and you know, when the wrote, the end credits came on, the standing ovation. It was maybe like five minutes long, and it was so the overwhelmingly like the love was insane. It was so uncomfortable. It was like, oh man, okay, okay. And then they like they followed us out into the street, down the steps to the Palais, you know, into the car. It was raining that night. I remember calling Oscar's mom in the car, you know, right afterwards, and just like bawling, just crying, you know, about the the reception and just about everything, and it, it's a moment I'll, I'll, I'll never forget, but for me, knowing that that story touched people, you know, on the other side of the planet, you know, for, for me, this kid from Newark, you know, um, it, it, it let me know that our experience, that experience is something that everybody has access to, that everybody can relate to, anybody that felt depressed, anybody felt wrongdoing, anybody that felt like they had an obstacle that was so huge that they couldn't accomplish, you know, and, and, they, and, and, and not, feeling so tight that they can't move. Anybody that had those experiences, you know, um, could relate to this project, could relate to this character, um, could relate to this story. Um, it, it, it meant a lot to me and it gave me, you know, more encouragement, more motivation to kind of keep going. So in 2015, um, two years after that, and we're, we're going over um, what we've already talked about as far as, uh, that awkward feeling, um, awkward moment. Uh, you now have in 2015, two movies reuniting with people who you've worked with before. Josh Trank on, uh, at, at this point now, um, Fantastic Four, and then on uh, Creed with Ryan Coogler again. With Josh, you'd made a big movie before. With Ryan, you know, Fruitvale was a low budget, short, production like bare bones thing now you guys are doing the the first version of rocky not starring sylvester sloan in the prince as the lead you're the first guy in 40 years other than sloan to to anchor one of those so how did you know how did that come together how did that come together <laughs> the fantastic four or the creed well let's you could take them one at one by one one by one fantastic four for me was um something that me and josh were talking about right after we finished chronicle that was the first project that he had up next uh you know him understanding my method my strategy about you know these colorblind casting kind of situation he wanted me to play johnny storm and that's the role that i wanted to play i was like cool you know, let's do it you know i don't care the backlash the write-ups the critics all that good stuff I, you know you know regardless of what the movie did you know in hindsight i would do it all over again for that you know to um for that halloween seeing those yeah. those little black and brown faces dressed up like johnny storm was made it all worth it to me i was like cool yeah. uh so for me <laughs> fantastic score was very very important uh, and then right after that, so Creed came about. Ryan pitched me Creed before we shot one frame of Fruitville Station. Back we, when he had not yet made any movie and you were not yet going to be leading too many movies. Yes, like okay. literally before any of right, that. Right. He was like, hey, man, I'm doing this, uh, you know, I'm thinking about doing this movie about Apollo Creed's son. You want to play him? I was like, cool, let's do it. 
and there's a little right, a little bit of a rights issue as well there, right? Yeah, yeah. We was gonna figure all that out. You know what I'm saying? In our minds, we were making the movie. It was like, yeah, Sly's gonna come on board. They gonna be cool with it. MGM, MGM. Yeah, they're gonna be down. They're gonna right. love this. It's right. gonna be great. Um, and it, we we had a few obstacles to get through, um, and but everything fell into place. You know, you know the you know Fruitvale Station did what it was supposed to do. It got the attention that it needed. Uh, you know, Ryan, you know, had the vision. Sly came on board eventually. You know, we got him. Uh, he had yeah. to really check you out. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had to make sure. I mean, honestly, he wanted to see what, you know, Fruit Row was going to do, how, the, you know, how, how Ryan would, how they would get along, you know. Uh, he wanted to fill me out a little bit, too. You know, I think he wanted to make sure I was up for it, you know, the challenge of what was going to actually take to make this type of film. Uh, and once everything kind of fell into place and we checked all those boxes that we were off to the races. So Ryan's one of those people that, you know, if you haven't had a chance to hear him speak or been in his presence or talk to him, he's a leader, you know, it's in his bones, it's in his DNA. Um, you, you, you just believe in him and, and you trust him. And as an actor, he makes you feel very comfortable. So with all those key ingredients and the fact that, you know, we had so much in common, uh, he's become a brother of mine very yes. quickly. So it, it was it was a no brainer. It was like, OK, cool, let's do it. I trust you. Let's right. let's go after it. And I wanted to get in shape. I was going to just ask. I like, was gonna that I was, was like, cool. I get to get abs. I was like, OK, cool. I never had abs before. I said, let me work, it doesn't, let me work on that. <laughs> it didn't happen magically. That was a lot of, a lot of work, right? 18, 18 months or something. Yeah, it's a, well, the, the thing with, with, um, with Creed, I knew about it so far in advance right. that I started really bur like putting on the weight and really started working out right around Fantastic Four. Right. So I had a head start. That's... So the first one gave me, I had a, like, more time than I normally would have had to prepare for a film. So I started taking boxing lessons, started you know, hanging out in you know, fighting gyms and, and being around fighters in their environment and really just trying to pick up that that body language, that, that, uh, swagger. That's, that's, I wasn't, I was trying not to say that, <laughs> but yeah, I was trying to pick, I was trying to pick up that swag a little bit. Right. And, uh, and yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's what happened. There are so many cool scenes in, uh, in the first Creed and then in Creed 2, which was this past year, another huge, well reviewed and hugely successful Thank hit. You. Um, I just, you know, they kind of come in flashes to you. You running, trying to basically running, outrunning the, uh, the the ATVs or yeah, whatever. Oh, the ATV, yeah, the first one. I'm sorry. The first, yeah, the first well, one. well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I think that the one that we'll we'll close this uh, chapter with asking you about is one that I think Sloane told you was sort of a rite of passage. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> you got that clip. I'm not okay, sure. Okay, cool. I was, I, uh, yeah, okay, cool. we met. I was certainly in the montage. That okay. Was, <laughs> no, it was one of those things where. Fight scene, you know, last fight, we're trying to get this punch and uh, trying to get it right, but it's not reading, it's not selling at all. Like punt where you're getting, you're I'm getting, getting yeah, you're I'm getting, getting hit. Down. You know, yeah. where, where Adonis gets gets uh, gets his clock clean real quick, <laughs> and and we we weren't picking it up. And Sly, you just kind of see him over in the corner, just like. <laughs> These kids, <laughs> ah, it's never gonna work. And it's like, fine. It's like, Sly, come on, like what, like come on, like say, like what do you guys say, like, like tell us. And he was like, kids gotta take the punch. And I was like, what you mean? He's like, you gotta take the punch. And I was like, he said, look, I did it. Uh, you know, Dolph did it. You know, you you gotta do it. And I, and I was like, Man, fuck it, you did it, I do it. Let's go do it. <laughs> I said, let's go. And then we went over there. We talked to uh, Tony, and Tony. He's a really, really nice guy. Really, really nice guy, professional fighter, you know, strong as an ox. And he, he didn't want to do it. He was like, ah, I don't know, I don't know, I really got to hit him. And he was like, yeah, you don't got to go 100%, but you got you to connect. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, don't go 100%, just, just, <laughs> just, just, just connect. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, set, we lined up the cameras and everything. Uh, you know... He took some warm-up swings. I'm seeing him hitting the pads, and I'm like, oh, man, that's gonna, this is going to be real. <laughs> I was like, all right, I don't want to see it no more. Let's just jump into it. So we jumped into it, and the first, first take, you know, crack, and I got hit. And I went down, and I was down on the ground, and you can kind of, you know, I'm kind of there, so you can hear everybody, you know, rustling around. And I, I'm listening for Ryan's voice. I'm listening for the first AD, a, a, AD's voice just to make sure they don't yell, cut. You know, because I was like, because in my mind, I was like, look, I don't want to do this again. Right, like, right, right. Like, 
<laughs> I'm acting right now. I'm down here. Yeah. I know I got to get up soon. <laughs> Just don't yell cut. Yeah. So then we went through that whole take, and you know we had a big jumbotron in the, in the studio that we were shooting on, and they played it back, and everybody's like, oh, man, it was such a great shot. But Tony's glove was in the way, so we didn't oh. see the contact at all. So I'm like, oh man, and it's and like everybody's huddled around a monitor like this, and I'm standing back there, and I just see all the heads kind of turn back at me, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's just do it again, let's just hurry up, let's just go again, and and we did it again, same thing, got hit, went down, that same feeling of like, just don't yell, cut, just right. just 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 trust me, I'm going to get up when I'm supposed to get up. And everything kind of worked That's out what it was supposed to. And, wow. and of course, Sly has his, you know, he's recording the whole thing right. with his phone. <laughs> and then, you know, the next talk, like when we were doing press, you know, of course that came out, but it made it all worth it. Like if it wasn't for Sly and kind of giving me that that push, I don't think I would have I would have done it. So it was. You good. think he? Uh, you think he really took the punch in his? Oh yeah. No, no, I know they did. No, no, I know they did. Like they, they were, they were, they it were going, just, they were letting it loose. They both right. ended up in the hospital. I think. No, they definitely did. Like yeah, Sly and Dolph were in the hospital for sure. Um, on those, on those movies, and you know when you get hurt in those fight sequences, it's almost like a badge of honor. You know, it's like you're earning your stripes. You're part of this, this fight club, so to speak, of of actors that know what it's like to go through choreography, to know to go through a, a real fight act, action sequence and to get hurt and to yeah. get, you know, hit. It's an elite group and I'm a part of that, so I'm pretty cool. I'm That's great. Cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at Creed and Creed 2. <laughs> 